Welcome to part 30 of our series, Secrets of Glessner House. In honor of National Preservation Month, we share the story of one of our most ambitious projects, the recreation of the elaborate hand-painted wall covering in the parlor. Our story begins when the Glessners moved into their Prairie Avenue home in December 1887. The parlor, which measures 18 by 20 feet, featured a floral wallpaper of unknown origin, executed in three shades of yellow and gold, as seen in the color chips at lower right. This wallpaper only remained in place for five years, as the rewiring of the house for electricity in 1892 involved opening up the walls, necessitating the redecoration of many of the rooms. In June of 1892, Frances Glessner noted in her journal that she had consulted with decorator William Prettyman about wall coverings for her home. Prettyman had been born in England in 1849 and arrived in Chicago in 1887, quickly befriending the architect John Wellborn Root, with whom he collaborated on several projects. In the same year that Francis Glessner met with Prettyman, he completed the elaborate decoration for the music room of the Franklin McVeigh Mansion on Lakeshore Drive, shown here, the only other house in Chicago designed by architect Henry Hobson Richardson. The house was demolished in the early 1920s. Shortly after arriving in Chicago, Prettyman had also undertaken the complete redecoration of the Sanctuary of Second Presbyterian Church, located just a few blocks from the Glessner home. The colors used are unknown, but the elaborate decoration on every wall surface, especially well seen on the arches at left, hint at the richness of the completed design. Sadly, his work was lost in a devastating fire in March of 1900. Aside from the Glessner parlor, Prettyman's only documented interior to survive is the banking room of the Society for Savings Building in Cleveland, dating to the late 1880s. The building was designed by Burnham and Root in the Richardsonian Romanesque style and featured Prettyman's elaborate decorative scheme complemented by a huge leaded glass skylight and additional paintings by Walter Crane. Facing Cleveland's public square, the building is now owned and beautifully maintained by Key Bank. When Prettyman visited the Glessner's home, he would have seen wallpapers, textiles, and rugs designed by Morris and Company, and their influence can clearly be seen in the design he created for the parlor. The dominant theme is birds, alternating between pairs of birds facing toward and away from each other, a popular device employed by Morris. The wall covering was painted onto a decorator-grade burlap during the summer of 1892 when the Glessners were at their summer estate in New Hampshire. Burlap was probably selected given the parlor's dual function as a music room, as it would have improved the acoustics of the space. Prettyman's specific methods and techniques were to be revealed as we planned for the recreation of his design. The wall covering was still in place when the house was deeded to Armour Institute in 1938. However, written accounts indicate it was badly faded by that time, a fact supported by this photograph of Armour staff taken that year. When the Lithographic Technical Foundation moved their research facility into the house in 1945, it opted to keep the wall covering in place and simply paint it over. It was repainted multiple times over the next 45 years as the house transitioned from their ownership to the Chicago Architecture Foundation, which initially used the parlor as an exhibition gallery. With the donation of the original Steinway piano in 1979, there was increased interest in returning the parlor to its Glessner era appearance. The recreation of the wall covering was just a dream at that point in time, so the walls were painted a soft orange to hint at the historic color scheme of the room. In 1991, the Grammar of Ornament, a Denver-based firm that specializes in the recreation and restoration of historic interiors, was asked to create a sample of the original Prettyman design that could be displayed in the room over the doorway leading into the dining room. Their sample was created referencing historic photos 
to determine the pattern. Additionally, a small section of untouched wall covering was discovered behind the back plate of one of the wall sconces, providing valuable information on the original colors used. Another 20 years would pass before the organization was in a position to move forward with the complete restoration of the parlor and its wall covering. The grammar of ornament was engaged to develop the full pattern repeat, as shown here in their completed design sketch. It was determined that the repeating pattern was achieved through the use of two different stencils with smaller details hand applied. Here we see Linda Paulson cutting one of the stencils. By July 2011, production of the wall covering was underway. The image on the left shows owner Ken Miller adding the layers of paint and decoration to the strips of canvas, which closely replicate the texture of the burlap original. On the right, additional silver decoration is being applied. As the grammar of ornament continued its work, the parlor was readied to receive its reproduction wall covering. Prettyman's original was carefully documented, removed, and stored. This is when it was confirmed that Prettyman had painted the wall covering in place. In addition to a heavy paste, the burlap was held in place with hundreds of small brads around the perimeter and randomly across the surface. The brads were under the sizing and initial gray layer of paint, clearly showing that the decoration was applied after the burlap was secured in place on the walls. The large unbroken north wall was covered with a single piece of burlap, extending the full width of the wall. This penciled notation found on the plaster wall reads 18 feet 8 and a half inches, the exact width of the piece of burlap installed here. Ken and Linda arrived from Denver in early October 2011 to oversee the installation of the wall covering by master installer Stephen Spooth. Since the reproduction was created off-site, it was produced in strips rather than in the single large pieces Prettyman had installed in the room. The installation was completed in three days, careful attention being given to ensure that the placement of the design on the walls matched what was visible in the historic photographs. After the strips were installed, any necessary touch-up was completed including along the edges, to ensure the pattern carried seamlessly from one strip to the next. This image shows the north wall with several strips in place, an excellent way to see the full design with the pairs of birds in their alternating poses. The wall covering consists of eight layers, starting with the canvas, which was sized and then painted with a gray paint. A silver metallic paint was then applied over the entire surface, and a gold metallic paint applied in a mottled fashion across that surface. A dark violet paint was stenciled onto the surface to create the main copper color, and then a second stencil was used to add smaller details. The last step involved a bit more silver paint for highlights. The fully restored parlor was unveiled on October 14, 2011. The two doorways from the main hall were closed with teal and purple ribbons, representing two longtime docents whose bequests and memorial gifts had made the project possible. The teal ribbon, representing the fight against ovarian cancer, was placed in honor of Aileen Mandel. The purple ribbon represented Bunny Selig, a member of the first docent class known for always wearing purple. Aileen's three children, shown at left, cut her ribbon, and Bunny's cousin, Dina Krause, and her husband and daughter cut the purple ribbon. The doors were thrown open for the assembled crowd. They were privileged to see the room as originally intended for the first time in 75 years, as it had been disassembled soon after John Glessner's death in 1936. In addition to the recreated wall covering, other major elements of the restoration included hanging reproduction Morris drapes and portieres, remaking the original banquette, and resetting the furniture and decorative arts exactly as shown in period photographs. 
The room now shines as a jewel box space within the house. We hope you have enjoyed learning more about our wonderful Prettyman wall covering in the parlor and the story behind its recreation. Tune in next time when another secret will be revealed.